guys, welcome back to the channel. Sandra here and Mia over there. And today I wanted to answer a really common question that I get from you guys, and that is how to bond with your bird, especially when you bring a new bird home. Whether the bird is a baby bird or it's a little bit of an older bird, I'm going to share some bonding tips that you can use in your home to bond with your bird. So as you might have seen in our previous videos or on our Instagram, I've developed a very close bond with our birds and Mia's only been with us for I think about a month now and we've developed such a close bond. But I'm going to touch on over bonding as well because when bonding with your bird, you want to make sure that you're not over bonding. But taking the time to build a long lasting relationship with your bird is going to be really beneficial for you as a pet owner, but also for the quality of your bird's life. Birds are full of personality and offer a loyal friendship if they are raised and cared for properly. You might notice that some birds are really easy to connect with where others might be a little bit more difficult and it's just going to take a little bit more time for them to get comfortable with you. So first off, why do birds bond with humans? Well, of course, birds would love to bond and flock with their own species, but in their absence, your bird is going to bond with you and those who live with you, including other pets. Your bird's mental health depends on having healthy bonds for a sense of safety and companionship. Your bird thinks of you and your family members as its flock. So you guys are flock mates. Flock mates will do many activities throughout the day together, including talking to each other, playing, foraging, bathing, and eating together. Your bird is going to naturally want to engage in these kinds of activities with the person who is most attentive to them in the household. Now having a really great, awesome, healthy relationship with your bird is great and it's necessary, but you want to make sure that you avoid overbonding. Now what is overbonding? It is when your bird develops a mate-like relationship with one person and this can cause really negative behaviors that we don't want to see from our birds. For example, territorial aggression, um, separation anxiety, excessive egg laying, and mate aggression as well. These types of behaviors are when your bird is going to attack other people or not let people in their space or near their cage and things like that. So these are behaviors that we don't want to see and we want to avoid. Now there are some things that you can do to prevent overbonding and I'm just going to mention five of them and then we're gonna talk about ways that you can bond with your bird. So the first one is developing a call that all members in your house use. So my husband and I use the same kind of like whistle to call out to Mia when she is calling out to us because she's wondering, hey, where are you guys? Hey, I'm safe, are you safe? And she just wants to know where we are. So we've developed this specific call that we use in our home to make sure that we're communicating with our bird so that she knows where we are and we know that she's okay. The second one is to ensure that everybody is having an equal role in your bird's life. So everybody is taking care of the bird, spending time with them so that the bird doesn't develop one really extreme deep bond with one person. Number three, you want to be really careful where you are petting, touching, or scritching your bird. So you can touch their feet, you can touch them or scritch them around the neck, on top of the head, on their beak or around their beak. This is considered friendly. But you never wanna pet your bird under its wings, on its back, on top of its wings, or down its tail. This is considered a courtship gesture and will make your bird hormonally frustrated because it's a relationship that can never be fulfilled. Number four is going to be providing your bird with lots of enrichment and exercise. This is going to be including all the things that I've mentioned a lot in the past is including lots of toys, a variety of toys, rotating those toys, creating foraging opportunities, having out of the cage time, letting them exercise by flying around and things like that. And number five is going to be allow your bird to bird so that they can learn the foundational parrot behaviors like grooming themselves and eating on their own and things like that. So now let's get into the good stuff, how to bond with your bird, right? Are we bonding? Are we bonding? Are we bonding? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's 
let's bond, let's bond. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do you have a kiss? Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to share with you nine ways that you can bond with your bird. So without further delay, let's get into number one. So the first thing is going to be socializing with your bird. So you wanna make sure that each day you're taking the time to socialize with your bird and spend time with them. Wow. So some birds might take a little bit more time to actually warm up to people, especially if they've been rescued, rehomed, or they haven't had a good experience with humans in the past. But don't worry, just be patient and make sure that you're not making any sudden moves that could startle your bird or having any loud noises around them that could further scare or startle them. And make sure when you're talking to them that you're using a gentle, happy, calm voice to make them feel calm. You also want to work on desensitizing your bird by spending time by their cage every single day and sitting by them, talking to them, so they get used to your presence. The more they get used to you, the more they're going to get comfortable with you. So just make sure that you're consistent with this on a daily basis. Number two, and this one's super simple and super easy, is sharing food with your bird. You can share your meals with your bird, but make sure that the meals are bird safe or healthy foods for your bird. Otherwise, you can make a healthy chop and eat it along with your bird because that just shows them that you are causing them no harm and you are providing food for them. So if you also wanna check out which foods are going to be safe for your bird, I'll link that in the description below that's linked to our blog as well. Number three is going to be handling your bird daily. Once your bird is comfortable with you and comfortable with your presence, then you can move on to handling your bird. Handling includes petting them, grooming them, holding them, having them perch up on your finger and things like that. Number four, if you are at the point where you can handle your bird, then the next step to building that bonding relationship is grooming your bird. Birds love this. I have not met a bird that doesn't love being groomed. And that means things like bathing, getting scritches, especially when they get pin feathers. If you can gently and softly help them get out their pin feathers around their neck, on, on the top of their head, on the side of the beak, they are going to love you for it and you're going to see total bliss on their face. In nature, grooming forms a bond between birds. And so this is a great way to show your bird that you are their flock if they will tolerate being handled by you. Petting your bird's head is a lot like preening as it will also remove dust and dirt from their feathers without stimulating their hormones. Number five, and this one might be really silly, but it's also really fun, dance with your bird. As you saw, Mia was loving that I was singing to her and she often likes this. So sometimes I will just sing to her and we'll dance together and she'll bob her head and have a good time. And Mango would love listening to music as well. So both of them really love music and you can try dancing with your bird. Birds often communicate with their voices and body language, so dancing is a great way to get some movement and bonding. Number six is going to be remember to be patient and just take it slow. Make sure you're being soft-spoken and you're creating a calm and inviting environment for your bird. Anything that's loud, obnoxious, and quick sudden movements are going to startle and scare your bird. So you wanna be really soft-spoken as I mentioned before with your bird and you just wanna take your time and go at your bird's pace. Number seven is going to be offer your bird treats. So trick or treat, your bird is going to know that you're not tricking them and that you're treating them. And I haven't also met a bird that doesn't love nuts and seeds. So these are the types of foods that we want to save as treats and offer them to our birds as a reward for you know coming out of the cage or perching up on your finger or doing a good job when you were giving them scritches, things like that. So we love almonds, pistachios, cashews, walnuts, but we just break off little pieces off of these nuts and we don't give them the whole one because conures are small birds, so just a chunk is going to be a great treat. 
The goal is to develop a relationship with our bird that is built on safety, comfort, and trust. So number eight is going to be also playing with your bird. So your bird is going to love to play and wants to play. They wanna to destroy toys and have fun and engage in different activities. So when they're in their cage, you wanna make sure that they've got lots of toys, you're rotating these toys on a weekly basis, and you're picking toys that are the right ones for your bird that they're going to engage with and that are also safe. But you also wanna have lots of activities when they're outside of the cage. So maybe you wanna have a little bird stand set up with more toys. You want to teach them how to skateboard or play basketball and fun little tricks like that. But you can also engage them in lots of foraging activities. And I actually have a YouTube video on this as well. So don't forget to check that out as well and just create these fun games for them to play with you when they're out of the cage as well. And last but not least, number nine is going to be training with your bird. So I mentioned teaching them tricks like skating or basketball and things like that, but birds will usually love training, especially because they're getting rewarded with nuts or seeds, the things that they love to receive. So things like teaching them how to wave, how to step up on your finger, how to turn around. You can practice with your bird these things and it's a great way to bond with your bird. Bonding with your bird is going to be a slow process, but I promise you that it is worth it. Birds are beautiful, loyal, and friendly companions, but they're not going to just connect with anybody. So if you wanna connect with your bird, make sure that you use the bonding tips in this video to cultivate that relationship. So that's it for today, guys. I hope that this video was helpful as always. Don't forget to, to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope that you now have the tools that you need to help you bond with your bird. You